Hello, and welcome to the Evelyn Y. Davis Studios at the National Press Foundation. Today, three prize-winning journalists offer tips for reporting on mental health. The National Press Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to helping journalists cover complex topics with depth and accuracy. We serve journalists in the U.S. and around the world. I'm Sandy Johnson, president of the National Press Foundation. With me are three journalists whose reporting on mental health hospitals in Florida has won numerous awards, including the Pulitzer Prize and MPF's Carolyn C. Mattingly Award. Anthony Cormier is an investigative reporter at the Tampa Bay Times. Leonora LaPeter Anton is a reporter on the Tampa Bay Times Enterprise team. Michael Braga is the investigations editor of the Sarasota Herald Tribune. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So you think that more organizations, new news organizations, should consider covering mental health as a beat. And what, what did you discover during your project that makes you think that? Well, I mean, we found so many stories. We could have mm -hmm. kept going forever, right? I mean, right. seriously, the, I mean, it was incredible, the number of stories. I mean, y you think about it, there's state mental hospitals. There's how we handle the mentally ill in the community. Mm -hmm. There's mental hospitals for children. There's, um, you know, Baker Act facilities. There's p uh, parents at home caring for mentally ill and what happens to them. And, and the social services beat has sort of been eliminated at a lot of, right. a lot of newspapers. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, think about it. These are our most vulnerable citizens, um, and, and our job is to look out for people like that. And so it's really important to have a beat um, where, you know, somebody's sort of looking into it every now and then and checking it out and, and doing stories that advance the... The, the, you know, what's going on and, and, and inform people about what's going on and keep a watch on what's going on because, because they don't have any advocates, people are um, not being watched. State agencies are not being watched and so they're doing things um, because they're not being watched and so they think they can. So in the case of Florida, you've got an agency, the Department of Children and Families, that is responsible for children and the mentally ill, mm -hmm. and they are criticized for their care of children too, foster children, and so they mental illness becomes a second thought. Men mm -hmm. Mental illness becomes a second thought. Mm -hmm. So there's so many stories. I mean, after it was all said and done, I I still have like six stories in my notebook that um, you know I could I could work on today. I mean, it's it's a really important beat. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. stories. Be, yeah. There's stories anybody in any newspaper in America can do. These aren't state specific. It's, I mean, you can do them tomorrow. You can go check out how your mental patients are being medicated. You can go get critical incidents on the facilities. You can go and see how they're being inspected. What are, are, are there food inspections? I mean, are there rats? Are there, I mean, all those things can happen. As soon as you watch this program, you can go and, and do that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, that's why she, I think it's important that someone is minding the shop. Mm -hmm. And it, and that beat could overlap into both covering homelessness, which is right. you know a large part um, a mentally ill population, um, and then also can go into uh, drug uh, abuse and and alcohol abuse. Um, you know, could be mm -hmm. all of those things, which is central to every downtown in every city across mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. uh, right, the beats overlap. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, uh, and so many Americans' lives are affected by people with mental illness. Mm -hmm. People have it themselves, their mother, their father, their son, their daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't get any news coverage except when someone brings a gun to a school or someone sh there's a shooting right. spree. That's the only time we really talk about it. But there's so much we could be reporting on the front mm -hmm. end. And there is a lot of data. Yeah, I was going to say, I might throw out some stats, like the pervasiveness of mental illness in this country. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, well, w we know that, I think it's, um, was it 17% of all of Florida's prison population is mentally ill? Right. And that's probably the same across the country. So 17% mm -hmm. of all um, inmates uh, are, are mentally ill. We have 5,000 people a year go through one of Florida's mental facilities. That's a lot of people every year. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. year that's 5,000, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's hundreds of people who are being treated for um, incompetency, right? They've committed some, even some minor infraction, and we send them off to a mental hospital for $330 a day. You could 
get a room at the Ritz, basically. And Baker Act, uh, Baker Act is Florida's uh, right. It's your civil uh, men confinement, commitment, civil, civil yeah. commitment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that that graph is going, you know, straight up. Mm -hmm. Anthony, what was that dollar number again? Three hundred and thirty dollars a day to house somebody in a mental hospital at a state-run facility. I mean, that's mm -hmm. ludicrously expensive mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. When for half that price, probably less, you can get them in the community. You can get them in a program. You can sort of make sure that they're taking their meds, make sure that they're safe, make sure that they're doing job training, that they're brushing their teeth. Hundred dollars a day in Florida, you could do that, mm -hmm. right? And, and or less. That's what the community-based care is. Yes. The cost. Yeah. But mm -hmm. instead, we back end it so that it's it's bad for taxpayers. It's bad for the patients. It's bad for the workers. It's an we wait system. for people to commit a crime mm -hmm. and then put right. them in the most expensive right. place possible. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then we don't protect them. So a thousand people were injured over five years at Florida's mental hospitals in the last five years and 15 people died of neglect or injuries suffered in a, in a fight. Mm -hmm. And how do you get readers to care about this issue if they're not personally affected by it? Um, it's really hard. I mean, that's one of the things, you know, I, I think that people are, um, you know, in some cases, uh, hardened to stories about the mentally ill. Um, right. So you have to find people who are, uh, you know, um, right in the middle of it, who can tell you firsthand what's going on. You have to find, um, you know, families that are willing to open up completely and tell you exactly what's going on with their lives so that y you can tell people, um, you know, what's going on right then and there and, mm. and hang out with them and, and show them. Um, and also getting videos is a huge thing. We found, once we got the videos, we were like, wow. That and these is are surveillance videos. Yeah, the surveillance mm -hmm. videos and the, the family videos and everything. That was a really big way to get people, we thought, to care, you mm -hmm. know, because you can see it now. You can see that people are being injured, you know, and stabbed and, and beaten. And um, so, you know, it's, it's about finding the right um, people to, and descending into their lives, trying to, you know, learn about them, what they're going through, spend a lot of time with them, and getting all angles of the story, getting even the perpetrators, the, like in the case of Anthony Barsati, we got mm -hmm. the guard who threw him into the wall. And, you know, so that gives perspective, and it, it makes him not this evil guy who threw somebody into a wall, but a real person who had worked 16 hours that day um, on a double shift and was tired, you mm -hmm. know? So um, it's it's that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Personalizing but it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the person, I don't think, necessarily has to be sympathetic in even the, uh, 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 you know, themselves. I mean, like, uh, they become sympathetic because of all the people that care about them. Uh, the the mothers, the, the fathers, the, you know, that make Anthony Barsati was a guy that fought with everybody all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yet he's still... He is, he's still sympathetic. Mm -hmm. somebody saw Part of our job as journalists is the same job that the public has, has when it comes to mental illness. We've got to destigmatize this as a character flaw, as a failing. This is a disease. And we as journalists can do a better job of telling the public, showing readers that these are vulnerable people, mm -hmm. that they live on the razor's edge. You know, there but for the grace of God go we all, where you know, one bad day can trickle into, um, you know, psychosis or um, reopening of old wounds. I mean, there are a lot of things we as journalists can do to, to remind people that these are human beings. Mm -hmm. And um, well, let's talk about some of those. Like, such. where did you get the information to put your project together? Oh. Let's talk about all the different <laughs> sources of data and, and uh, other information. Right. It was incredible. I mean, I, the variety yeah. of sources that we use. We went to the mat and we found everything available in every corner <laughs> and right I mean well because right. I guess we should say what what what's difficult first off is that mm -hmm. because of HIPAA or whatever mm -hmm. uh, you can't get um, uh, um, mental health information about people individual right individuals. right mm -hmm. so um, but we were able to get um, you know of course all their anytime they 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 mix with the criminal justice system we can get their um uh, incident reports at the at the at the hospitals and we can get the uh, police reports about them funnily enough we could also get 
all the medications that they had been taking for the last 10 years, I mean, in bulk, we could see that they were receiving um, uh, Seroquel or, or, or other uh, drugs, uh, you know, how much was ordered for each hospital. We just couldn't mm -hmm. see how much was ordered for each person. I think um, for other journalists, you have to be, we should be a little specific. Mm -hmm. um, ACA inspections, your local, your, your state what um, is that? Uh, okay. agency for healthcare administration, your okay. state probably has some regulatory board that oversees hospitals. Go ask them how many times they've sent inspectors into your mental hospitals. Mm -hmm. Look for health inspections, food inspections, the traditional things we'd look at. Um, go pull data on uh, hotline calls, whether or not um, anyone from the mental facilities is calling uh, an abuse hotline. How many times are they doing it? What kind of investigations are they doing? Um, both critical incidents and, and, and your police reports. Those are really fundamental bedrock sort of things you can do. Medical examiner reports. Right, mm -hmm. uh, right. Those, those two. Mm -hmm. um, and from the else? worker side of things? Oh, personnel files. Right, um, workers comp claims. Here's, here's one little detail. They, they, uh, they, if you are an abuse, if you're an employee who mm -hmm. abuse, abuses a uh, patient, they, they can withhold your file and your name and your record based on a law in Florida. Mm -hmm. So how do we get around that? We, um, we connected them to police reports. To police reports, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so if you're a journalist working on this, go and ask not just for a personnel file, but sometimes they have a super secret special file for just <laughs> discipline. Make sure you're asking for that. Right. Go ahead and ask them if they have any kind of employment logs, you know, mm -hmm. who these people are, how much they make, where they're from look for their, um, their sort of work history. We found that they were laying off workers and sort of hiring lower priced folks, who some of whom had just worked at Burger King days earlier. Or graduated high school. Were mm -hmm. thrust into this, uh, yeah. into this system. And they had mm -hmm. criminal records. Mm -hmm. Right. Be and because they're government employees, their records are available. They are. Mm -hmm. Thankfully in Florida, most mm -hmm. everything is a public record. Sunshine. It right. is, mm -hmm. you know, it's a hot state and it's a little crazy, but the public record laws can't be beat. But I also am a firm believer that if you're asking for the right thing elsewhere, you, you can find it. There are ways to do um, this sort of thing elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Disciplinary logs, vendor sure. contracts. Sure. What else do we get? Um, well, don't forget the budgets. The budgets. Right. Um, uh, all of their budgets. Per hospital? Or by per hospital, mm -hmm. by state, by agency, by everything, right? And so we also found that they had scorecards where they, right. where they recorded uh, um, oh, uh, I guess how many people were at the hospital at a particular time, and mm -hmm. and um, how much per day the the, the 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 hospital was charging. You know how many incidents of violence were occurring, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned there was some federal data as well that you accessed, Center for Medicaid. Center, Center for yes, yeah, CMS. Mm -hmm. pages. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're not as useful as you, you you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, quite a lot of it is prohibited from HIPAA, but you're able to sort of at least see what CMS is looking for and looking at. Mm -hmm. We've seen also one of the things you may want to check is whether CMS has come to your state, uh, your town, your city to do an investigation. They hadn't, frankly, which was rather surprising in Florida, but we found that he had done some in Texas and in California. So there are ample opportunities for you to go either federally, locally, statewide, to look, you know, sort of in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. And then also civil court records um, at in, in the towns where the Florida hospital is located and police reports in the town, well, we said that mm -hmm. before, but in the towns where the all the, either the local uh, mental health facility or the hospitals are located. So, um, you know, the civil court records, the patients themselves file all these documents um, habeas, where is it? Habeas corpus, habeas yeah. corpus, you know, hey, get me out of here type thing. Mm -hmm. They put a lot of things in there. There's all sorts of lawsuits filed against the right. facilities, but you have to really go figure out where they're filed because sometimes they're filed in the place where the person mm -hmm. came from, and sometimes they're filed right where the um, facility is located. So it's it's about looking all in men multiple places and mm -hmm. and finding the name. It's it can be the head, the person who runs the hospital. That's, that could be the, the person that got sued, or it could be the hospital itself that got sued. So you have to just look in many different ways. Mm -hmm. So you've created a giant data set. How do you analyze that to pull out the story threads? Um, well, you, you always sort of interview your data, mm -hmm. um, right? You ask your data certain questions, and it uh, 
if it's sound, it should give you certain answers. Sometimes you're not going to like the answers. They may not. They may lead you down different paths. Um, mm -hmm. So we sort of parceled them out, right? We we knew that budgets, the financial issues were important. We knew that the rising violence was important. We knew that uh, at one point we had hospital inspections, right? Those were important things. So each one of those, you sort of ask it your questions. Um, we didn't do a whole lot of top. We didn't need to do a whole lot of top level joining. Nothing in SQL. Nothing really beyond that. No, it wasn't. just really simple. This was really simple pivot tables. Mm -hmm. Basic fundamental, you know, data work. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm not a data person, mm -hmm. and um, so I was able to go in and use it. And like for example, I wanted to know every incident that happened in uh, the North Florida Evaluation Treatment Center where Barsati was during the exact time that he was there. Mm -hmm. So I was able to go in, find all the incidents uh, incidents that happened in that short period of time, major incidents, you know, mm -hmm. where somebody got really hurt and then layer those into my story. Uh, this happened, you know, a man was punched in the jaw because he farted, another man, his head was beaten by four people, you know, another man this, another man that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was really helpful that way. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, something else happened to us along the way is that uh, we would think that one, one set of conclusions or one set of findings was important and then three, four months would go by and we'd sort of forget things and then we'd go right. back and we'd look, yeah. we'd look at the data again. Mm -hmm. You know, and then something like, for instance, the importance of deaths for us was like in the beginning we thought, well, there's 14 or 15 of them. You no, know. there were 55 of them. There were 55 deaths? Well, but natural we thought, and everything. Right, and right. for some reason we didn't think we they, we didn't we were looking to see if they it was abuse. We thought, mm -hmm. is there abuse? Are the guards killing the patients or mm. hurting the patients or whatever? And we didn't find that. So we were like, huh? I guess death is you know there's not that many deaths. But then we started relooking at the at the data and we realized, so or the reports, the reports, mm -hmm. right, Anthony? And mm -hmm. we realized that people were dying of like constipation. Like the uh, one man, you know, he was severely constipated. They did he he was you know seeing blurry. Um, you know, his passing out everything. His, his yeah, it's urine. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it was. And, and, his and, urine and turned brown. His urine, and then nine hours went by. His urine turned brown. His colon burst. He died of constipation. Who dies of constipation in this mm -hmm. day and age? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it happens, but you know, it shouldn't ha happen in a mental hospital. Mm -hmm. And right. So, um, so we revisited. We it. started revisiting, and then we realized, oh, medical neglect. They're not taking people to the hospital when they hit their head. They're you know, they're letting, uh, uh, you know, people are beating each other up and they're, you know, that kind of thing. It's, or, or mm -hmm. they're, com they're being left alone with items that they shouldn't be left alone with, so they're committing suicide. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, they're not being protected, they're not being watched, mm -hmm. those types of things. So you've done all of your early data work, your analysis of it, you're starting to do your interviews. What tips do you have for reporters before they approach the hospital? Um, uh, leaders or mm -hmm. the, the, the head of the state agency that was in charge of these you hospitals? A very simple one, a very simple one. Mm -hmm. Bring your computer with you so that when they tell you your data is wrong, your reporting is wrong, you can flip your computer around and go say, it's here. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's Black what we did. We, we there literally was a moment for us where Michael had his computer. They were saying, there's no way your data is right. Absolutely wrong. You guys are full of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michael flipped his computer around and said, right here. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you want to go in and you want to have a game plan. Um, sort of, we were fortunate in that each one of us was heading down our own unique sort of, you know, path or whatever. Um, so we we sort of walked through the things we needed to get out of them. We strategized what we would do when they um, pushed back, when they didn't believe us. Michael so heroically turned his computer around, <laughs> but um, no, and we had we had ideas walking in the door. They're going to refute us. Let's mm -hmm. look and see how they refuted other people um, and try to work with sort of those things, those functions. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I think I, I, I learned um, during this process, I learned from Leonora um, because it was re-reporting. Re mm -hmm. um, Leonora goes and when, when she reports on something, she lives there. She she goes, she goes back, she goes back again, she She's goes an, back she again, embeds. she goes back, she goes mm -hmm. back again. And, uh, you know, you're never done. You're never really done. There's always something missing. Right, Leonora? How do yes. you? Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's a narrative reporter. You know, mm -hmm. you hang out with the people, you get to know them, and you get to get moments where they open up. If you just go and you interview somebody for an hour on the phone, or you just go to their house and you get a one-hour interview, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to really get a true. They're not going to. They're not going to open up to you the way they would if you if you just become somebody who's there. Mm -hmm. And um, and that takes time. Um, you know, to be able to hang out with somebody and. And uh, you know, in their their moments, um, uh, you know, but but it it really does create a richer story of, of you know more context, more uh, you know little moments that show you what's Details. going on. Details. Details. Right. All right. Well, thank you very much for your tips to help other journalists take on the mental health beat, which, as you pointed out, is critically important. Right. So today we've learned from journalists who want to, about. Today we've learned about tips and resources for journalists who want to dig deeper on mental health issues. Our thanks to Anthony Cormier, Leonora LaPeter Anton, and Michael Braga. For more information about MPF training, check out our website, nationalpress.org.